Hello, it's Woody from Splice. Today we're going to take a look in this video blog post at how to uh, uh, how to put some buttons on the street sign. So you can see in my simulator I have a, just a PNG, or actually it's just a JPEG of a blank street sign. And in the storyboard I've added uh, the two cross streets for Splice's office in Toronto for our training center, so Young and College. And if I leave it like this and I run it, I want it to look like this. Now to get it from here, the way it is in the simulator, from here, the way it is in the storyboard, I have to apply a transformation on each one of the buttons. See that button still works and this button still works. The transformation lets me tilt it and, and distort it uh, so that it does seem like it, it sticks to the background graphic. In fact, I could even take this down a little bit further, run it again. Um, the technique I'm going to show you is useful because we're just using the standard UI buttons. We don't have to make a custom view for it. And you don't have to use something like Photoshop to combine the background with the foreground, the foreground being the text. The nice thing about that, by keeping them separate, is you're still, you're still able to localize your app. So if you want to run it in a different language, we can just change the strings that are used to draw the buttons without having to do another version of the graphic. If we had to do another version of the graphic, the process would be a little bit longer because we have to make up a graphic for each language. And it also means that we can't rely on things like auto layout as much. Um, it also means that if the user wanted to scale or, or change the size of the font using dynamic text, um, that wouldn't be responsive either. So it's better to try to leave these as actual UI buttons and then use what's called a transform on the button to give it a two-dimensional or a three-dimensional change. Our objective is to take a button like this and manipulate it in a 3D space so that it looks like it fits or belongs in with the background. Now to do that, there's two different approaches you can use when you want to transform the look of, for example, a, a button or really any of the views. There's a, a 2D way and there's also a 3D way. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that a button is a UI view. So the techniques that you're learning here affect all UI views, not just a button. In fact, if you look at the, the chain of objects, we have a NS object. From there, we have UI responder. From there, we have UI view. And then from there, we branch off to have some controls. And then a collection of views such as uh, image views, um, activity indicators, and we also have things like uh, UI sliders, that would be over here, and UI switches. Now, button, in fact, anything that falls into UI view has the ability to be transformed in a two-dimensional form because every UI view has a property called transform. I can take this button and I can rotate it. I can take it and I can scale it so it becomes larger. I can reposition it. So it starts here and then it moves so that it's down here. It's a Y transform. But what I can't do is bend it backward. For example, if this piece of paper was my button, I couldn't take it and bend it backward like that or forward like this. I also couldn't take it and move it like this or like that. All I can do is keep it on a flat surface and rotate it like this. So that's a two-dimensional rotation. What I'd like to do is a three-dimensional rotation. So the way that we do this is we access another property that's on every UI view. It's a property called layer. And layer gives us access to a three-dimensional transform. So this is Adobe's After Effects. Uh, but again, you could use a program like Apple's Motion or anything that lets you take some text and manipulate it in 3D. And I use this program 
just to help me pre-visualize what I need to do when I actually get to my source code. So for example, here I have my background graphic. And I've added some text. I just wrote the word button in. And I've opened up the transformation uh, controls and the timeline for After Effects. And again, you don't have to do this. This is just to give you a better idea of what it is that we are manipulating. I turned on a little box so that After Effects knows that I want to process this in three dimensions. So that now when I come down to rotation, I have a X, Y, and a Z rotation. So I'll take the, for example, the X rotation. I'm just going to move it so we can see what it does. All right, so any X rotation is moving on the horizon. I like that. I'll reset that. The Y rotation would be this one. And finally, the Z one would be this one. So you can see by moving Z just a little bit like that, that's already starting to look like it's better integrating with that background. Then I might want to take Y and manipulate it too, just so that it follows a little bit more with the sign. I'm just doing it by eye until I can see what I think I might want it to look like. Something like that. If I used an X, remember that the X is being added and then the Y and then the Z are being added to it, so it just kind of gives it a free-floating effect. That's not what I'm going for. So I know that I probably want to manipulate X and Z, sorry, uh, I, probably, I probably want to manipulate Y and Z, something along these lines, negative 14, negative 7-ish, over in uh, over an X code. Uh, so I probably want to manipulate X and Z, something along these lines, uh, negative 14 and 0 degrees, over in X code. So let's hop back to X code. And I have my source code written out here. So I'll just take you through it. Now, I'm not trying to animate these button changes. I just want to make them take on this perspective when the application or when the view controller uh, loads. So in view did load, uh, and this is the Objective-C version, but I'll show you the Swift version after. I start off by creating uh, a CA Transform 3D. And there's a collection of routines you can use to make a 3D rotation, to make a 3D translation, a 3D scale. Uh, and combinations thereof, like concatenation, to join them together. So the first thing I do is make a, uh, sorry, the first thing I do is use the procedure CA transform 3D make rotation, which takes four arguments. The first argument is the angle in which it's going to rotate. In the core animation framework, as opposed to using degrees, like 360 degrees to represent a full circle, radians are used. For myself, I don't really think in radians, I think in degrees. Um, so I have a function up here that's been defined just to convert from degrees to radians by multiplying the value by pi and dividing by 180. So it's just a convenient uh, convenience uh, function that I'm accessing. So I have it backing up 29 degrees, which is then converted to radians. And then you have three values, which are x, y, and z. And because I want this one to be my Y transformation, I pass 0 for X and 0 for Z, and just 1 for Y, which means this is a Y manipulation. I'm not trying to convert this to negative 29 degrees on any of the other axi, just Y. Then I do the same thing for Z. So I take the, uh, I declare another variable of type CA transform 3D, use the CA transform 3D make rotation function, tell it that I want to move about 8 degrees in this case, and I want it to be just Z. So it's 0 on x, 0 on y, and 1 on z. And then I need to put the two things together. Now, layer only has one property called transform. There we go. Only has one property for transform. Which means if you want to put two things in there, like a transformation on y and a transformation on z, you have to concatenate them together. And for that, there's another function called CA transform 3D concat. It takes two CA transform 3D uh, variables, and then joins them together, concatenates them together, and gives us another one back, and then that's set directly into the button's layers transform property. So, if I comment this out and run the app, just with those three lines of code, that's all that's required 
to get the young street uh, set up like that. There we go. Next, you need college to be rotated uh, with a similar kind of change. So for the college text, the college button, um, same thing, I declare a new variable for transform x, simply because I hadn't declared one previously. And then I set it to negative 26 degrees and a 1 in the x argument, uh, 0 for y and 0 for z, so it's only going to affect x. And I'm reusing my variables for y and z. So now I have a value of transform x, transform y, and transform z. I'll take the first two of them, x and y, and put them together into a new one called transform xy. That's because the transform 3D concat only takes two arguments. What I want to do is combine three transform 3Ds. So I put the first two together into a new one, and then I use CA transform 3D concat again, taking the output of the previous line, line 37, and then add Z to it, and then stash that into the buttons layer. And that is how you take any UI view and manipulate it in 3D.